Uh, hey, how's it going? Garden, the little box up there. I, I couldn't see that. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, uh, Joe, for taking the time to talk to me. Uh, man, I love this movie. Uh, it was really a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, it was definitely giving me like Terminator meets um, the All Through the House episode of the uh, Tales from the Crypt. Yeah, kind of my vibe. <laughs> nice. uh, well, you nailed it. Uh, I also like how you got some uh, some neon going on in your uh, in your background there. So that's pretty pretty fitting. Yeah, that's I mean, that's kind of why I came into my movies. I just like that aesthetic in my everyday life. So I like to be in it while I work and live and watch movies, too. So I kind of just designed my apartment. I slowly am taking neon uh, props from my movies, too, and like integrating them. <laughs> just becoming a museum nice um yeah so uh jumping right in um i had to say that like one of the things that really struck me uh about this movie was just the really fantastic uh chemistry your your leads have with each other um you know uh riley dandy and of course sam delich i hope, think i'm pronouncing that right um I still fuck it up that's fine <laughs> that <is delish. laughs> thank you. I like, I like that. Um, but yeah, they're, they're fantastic. And I think, uh, you know, the character of Tori is such a badass. Uh, so I was like, kind of wondering, like, you know, um, did y'all have like time to rehearse or like, um, I know sometimes it's like, um, like smaller budget movies, y'all don't have that kind of luxury to, you know, like do some rehearsing beforehand, but um, so we didn't have any rehearsal like before the shoot. Uh, we had a long shoot, um, about uh, 40 days. So we did some rehearsal on set a lot. And like we would really rehearse the scenes, especially since we we're shooting on film. <clears throat> and we would kind of block the dialogue scenes in longer chunks. So we did a lot of rehearsal on set. And um, I knew uh, I couldn't get them both in the room to read, but I knew that they were both very good and spontaneous and a big thing for me is riffing and like in my kind of one-on-ones with them before I cast them I would have them riff scenes and they both sounded like they were riffing stuff that I had written which I knew was great so um once we get on set you know we would have a lot of time to rehearse these scenes and a lot of the dialogue you see was actually added on the day like those you know the big long shot about Chris Black Christmas and all that was like added on the day um just because we had extra time and we had these things and they were so good at what they were doing and they started to realize that both characters were extensions of me and we had such a long shoot that they were hanging out with me for so long that like a lot of that dialogue stuff was kind of towards the end of the shoot and they just you know like a sponge were able to kind of take in pieces of me and pieces of my personality and started like seeing what I liked and how they played off each other so it was like this really nice organic thing that grew over the course of the production and by the end we had been working together so long we were so friendly you know they're so fucking good at their job that like we were able to just build those scenes and the chemistry was organic and you know we were able to build those dialogue scenes kind of like you know from some of them are what they were on the page and some of them are so much bigger so I mean that's like a, a testament to all the elements coming together you know um them really grasping hold of my writing because you know I have the type of writing that if the actor's wrong it just is going to make it sound terrible um but you know they nailed it and Josh uh either my editors you know really fucking was able to cut that you know the the dialogue the kind of crackerjack dialogue together so it was uh kind of all those elements coming together and you know I'm really happy with the way it played Nice. Um, now this kind of like segues uh, into my next question, which was, uh, was there any like uh, ad libbing or was everything like strictly uh, to, to the script? Um, I would say it was about 50 50. Um, some of the scenes are like very much word for word, like the Pet Cemetery 2 dialogue, uh, some of the Van Hagar dialogue, Soundgarden, stuff like that. But then there were scenes that are very much uh, completely worked on from scratch like i was saying like the whole walk and talk down the street um that was like three or four lines before but i'm like look at this fucking street we got how are we only going to shoot out here for you know 20 seconds and then we just wrote like together we came up with or you know uh, there would be a lot of times if we came up with a scene or we wanted to riff it out i would kind of do the beat points like make sure we hit this mark let's get here and then we would kind of work out the scenes in the rehearsal um so and then there were other scenes where like, you know, their first dialogue in the record store where it's like that was a lot on the page but then what's in the page was kind of like uh, lines were kind of improv so it's like that structure was there but then they were they flavored it other ones we built from the ground up other ones were like on point you know word for word so it was a, a really nice mix that i think balanced well um and we cut like 12 13 minutes of dialogue out so i think we shaped it well where it didn't overstay its welcome either or get too repetitive i hope uh yeah i i thought it was great i think in my review i i was saying that like you know as uh you know we're both horror fans but like 
a lot of times uh they kind of skip developing the character and like right away like i knew who like tori was as a character and it was all thanks to that like really rich world building and dialogue really that that kind of made her like engaging and, and relatable yeah yeah i mean we all know that there's gonna be fucking a santa killing people in this movie like so you're gonna get that but like why does you know everything beforehand have to be you know groan inducing you know like uh, there's so many slasher movies where i love the fucking set pieces or i love the scenes of the killer but like why can't we equally you know what imagine how dope it would be if we had a movie like before you know not comparing myself to richard linker but it's like before sunset or days confused but then a fucking robot shows up it's like <laughs> yeah. i want the best of both you know from dust till dawn has fucking amazing dialogue for 45 minutes and it turns into a fucking splatter fest and it's like i did you know that's one of those movies that i grew up on that had it's like oh wait you can have awesome characters and dialogue and then a bunch of cool action where those characters are then integrated into that action and i just don't think it's done enough you know and i think maybe that's because a lot of horror movies are written by people who are just taking a job trying to spit yeah. something out you know? not a lot of opportunities for people who truly like you know love the rich uh the, what there can be in a horror movie and i kind of wanted to bring that to it as much as i could yeah uh i think that's something that i've I noticed in all your films is there is this like genuine love for the genre not only just horror but like action you know dark comedy thrown in there like there you really get a sense that like you know your stuff uh you're not just taking a paycheck um so like speaking of some of the dialogue uh i i have actually my notes about the pet cemetery 2 blair witch 2 uh, uh banter which i loved um is that your your personal sentiment as well Yes, those two are very much my sentiment. Uh, yeah. Her dialogue about Blair Witch 2, the reason that that wasn't allowed to be changed is because I feel extremely strongly about that. And I wanted to have <laughs> yeah. an entire audience worldwide who watched this movie um, have to hear the same diatribe I gave all my friends about Pet Cemetery 2. In which case, 95% of the people that I actually, you know, uh, convinced to watch the movie who hadn't like watched it recently, they fucking love it. I mean, you just got to get over the, you know, like it's just, I don't know. I fucking love it. I think it's genuinely a really good movie. Blair Witch 2, I can see some of the uh, split there, but like, I just I honestly love that movie. And I think that, you know, what the filmmaker was trying to do was amazing. Um, he kind of got fucked over, but like, I don't know. I just, that movie holds a special place in my heart. And uh, I wanted to um, start the Blair Witch 2 renaissance myself. And hopefully yes, that's uh, awesome. Well, I love it too. That's why I kind of like had to, to talk about that for a second, because I was like, I was like, all right, I, I really like Tori as a character, but now I'm like, I love her. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so um, also real quick, I wanted to talk about the, the, some of the, the music that you have in this movie, because it's so well utilized, you know, because again, uh Tori as a character is you know a big you know music uh fanatic and movie era you know music and movie fanatic so um you know uh tell me about uh how you kind of selected some of the uh tracks and and music for this movie um well the opening uh Christmas Bloody Christmas was like a song that was actually recorded just for the movie um and I don't know if you've seen Bliss but uh the band in the uh, bar and bliss who's playing the goth rock song they wrote the christmas bloody christmas theme song oh, nice. and the guitarist of that band is the cinematographer on christmas bloody christmas but wasn't the cinematographer on bliss so um it kind of all comes full circle uh i really wanted that to be um run rudolph run by lemmy and billy gibbons but it's like fucking almost 100 grand to license that same thing with our most merry christmas so we kind of just figured well, i know a lot of cool bands let's you know have one made for ourselves you know uh, our very own um earthless the earthless track like over the sex scene and the family slaughter that's literally just because i was listening to that album when i wrote that scene and i just like to put on big long um instrumental like you know metal music that just builds and builds and i'm shooting when i'm writing set pieces because it kind of gets me into the fucking groove and it builds so i had that song on and i was like my hands i must have got arthritis when i was just pounding so fast that was like a 20 minute scene and i wrote that whole like eight page cross cut like building and i was just like and i was almost like writing it like to the fucking guitar because i was like why don't i just have them put on this album uh and then that's what the scene plays to because i fucking wrote it and it's literally structured with the beats to that song so that was kind of like uh I just had to do it. Thankfully, they agreed, you know, it's always more expensive when you write a fucking song into the script. But then um, everything else that like populated the background and the record stores and stuff like that are all bands that I really like. And, you know, you always just try to get the rights. And hopefully, you know, thankfully, I don't like, you know, people like, you know, Taylor Swift's not my favorite artist. So it's a little easier to get 
you know, songs from lesser labels, you know, throw them a little bit of money and, it, and they get showcased in a movie. So it's all just bands that I'm uh, mostly a fan of, but Earthless was like written in, you know, this has to be fucking licensed for this movie. Um, because I don't know what other nine minute instrumental metal track is going to build. And also we have them arguing about which Earthless album is better. So <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hope they do it. <laughs> That's awesome. I also love the uh, the the long di dialogue sequence of like cutting your hair equals uh, that they start sucking, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. but um, yeah. So uh, speaking of like uh, you know, the music and stuff, uh, is it too early to say like there might be like a soundtrack or? Um, there's gonna be a a vinyl release and a CD release of the actual score by Stephen Moore, but uh, definitely not like the the songs in the movie mm -hmm. though the christmas buddy christmas theme song they're going to do a seven inch of that nice. um i thought they were going to do it for the holiday season but i think they got a little busy but that will hit at some point um maybe next holiday season or for a sequel <laughs> oh that oh man i would love that would be uh, a sequel would be amazing I, I know i need to wrap up here soon but um i just wanted to um also ask you about like what you thought about um if you saw violent night yet and i think it's kind of cool that like both movies have kind of hit about the same time. Yeah, I actually saw, uh, I know one of the writers, Josh Miller, um, really well. And uh, he's one of my friends. And it's just, it's so random because like, I don't think that I can't, it's, it all blends together now. But I don't know if we knew that each other was writing a Christmas movie, but like they both kind of got greenlit at the same time. It was crazy. And um, we were like, what the fuck are the chances that a genre movie is going to get greenlit? Like, you know, his was at Universal. So he didn't really know if it was going to get made, but they were, he was getting paid to write the script and all that. And mine was like, they're like, well, we're going to finance it. You know, maybe we'll see. And then they both kind of just happened at the same time. And um, I think it's awesome. You know, he's got the big one. So like we just ride on his coattails, hopefully. Um, thankfully, the movie's really good. Uh, I saw it, you know, I went and saw it early and then I went and supported last weekend. But it's just so different. You know, it's, it is. It's like an action movie, but it's to have two you know, hard R genre movies with Santa at the forefront. Like as a kid, I'd be like, fuck yeah. And they're, you know, both coming out in theaters and they're both like making a dent. Like, I think it's just, I think it's fucking awesome. And, you know, there's a bunch of drive-ins this weekend doing Christmas, what a Christmas and violent Night double feature. So like, nice. Again, you know, I'll get all that violent night business. It's good by me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's awesome. So, um, so wrapping up, uh, this does come out, um, December 9th. Is that right? Yeah. It comes out in about nine hours. All uh, right. <laughs> Shutter um, BC and theaters start their Thursday previews at seven. So that's awesome. And I'll I'll be sure to link like where y'all can check that out in theaters. Uh support this movie. It's awesome. Joe, thank you so much. I've been such a huge fan um like ever since uh like way back. So like this has been so awesome to to actually get to like chat with you. Yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, awesome. Um, all right. Uh thanks so much. Sure.